Oh yes, this is an example of a healing that I would call a miracle healing. I think it's a beautiful example. It's a story that I've um, told in class before on a couple of occasions, and it is one that students have asked me to repeat from time to time because it's such a, such a beautiful story, such a nice healing story. So this person comes in, the man is in his mid-50s, he's overweight, he's, uh, he has a profound existential disagreement with life, and that manifests itself in all kinds of problems. Basically, nothing works for him. He's married, has a family, has four children, um, but nothing is really working. The marriage is not really working, the children are not doing well in school or in the family. I mean, his job is um, on the verge of uh, not being there anymore. In other words, nothing is really working out for him. And um, we're able to move quite quickly past this recounting of events and instances of issues that are not working for him, and we're able to move quite along onto this trend. What's going on inside of you? Who are you? What's, what happened to you? What's, what are you really feeling about life? And to make a long story short, he uncovers within himself this profound disagreement with life, with God, with the cosmic, however you want to look into this. But the, the interesting thing about this is that he proceeds with the therapeutic process and he heals. And I remember we had a session, and this was back in the late 90s, it was several years ago, but I remember quite well. I remember that he, in, in this Friday night session, and I know this because when he came back, he told me the story, he had a profound experience with the light, as we call it. In other words, he had a he had a miracle healing. Something happened within him. He was deep in the hypnotic state, and your hypnotherapist sometimes, you know, is, we're like what we're watching the experience from the outside. The experience is really taking place within the person, but he had some sort of encounter with something that he describes as the light, and he lets go of all of his grievances. That's what I know about that session. We end the session, say goodbye, schedule the new appointment. He comes back a few days later and he tells me what happened. He says, listen, I left here last time transformed. I was thinking about my family, how selfish I've been, I'm thinking about work, about this, about that. And he tells me all about his conclusions that night when he was driving home. And he decided he slept only a few hours, but he was, he was happy. And he wanted to for the first time in his life, he had been married for more than 20 years, for the first time in his life, he wanted to prepare breakfast for his family. So he wakes up very early, without an alarm clock, he was happy to do so. He wakes up, jumps out of bed, and drives to the store. He gets there, the grocery store is closed. It opens at 7 a.m., but it was still closed, which means he probably got there at about 6, 6.15, because he told me that he was in his car for a while, waiting for the store to open. So I assume about 6.15 or so based on what he told me. What happened was, when he sees the, the people uh, getting into the store, now he is pretty sure the store is open, he gets out of the car, and he tells me, crying. Tears are running down his face. A grown man telling me, as I got out of the car, I saw the sun for the first time. And that changed my life. And then he started telling me everything that changed. He started telling me all of the things that he hadn't told me before that he was planning on doing. How he didn't want to live anymore, how he didn't like his life. And suddenly he saw the sun. And I think you and I both agreed that he didn't mean I saw the sun as in this ball of fire in the sky. I think he meant something much more powerful than that. The source of life in the heavens. There's something quite spiritual about recognizing that the sun is up there. And he says that he, when he gets out of the car and he sees the sun that complements the healing experience of the night before, and it completely changes him. I saw him a few more times, and as far as we could discuss and talk in therapy, his life had changed completely. He went into work. He apologized to his co-workers for his misbehaviors in the past. He was basically selfish and annoying. I mean, these are his words, not mine. I don't even know where he worked. He, you know... And he basically apologized to everyone. He made amends with everybody. He wanted to sincerely make amends with people because he recognized that his behavior just had not been very nice. 
Same thing with his family. He had a long talk with his wife. And all of this kept going on. We saw each other a few more times. He basically felt that he was done with his therapeutic process, the reason for which he came in. The problem was over, basically. But he continued, as of the last time we spoke, he continued to make amends, make reparations, and be nicer to people and build a better life for himself, for his family, and for those around him. I just find it to be such a beautiful story because th this element of getting out of the car early in the morning and seeing the sun for the first time and feeling how, how the light of the sun, how the light, how life itself, because the sun is the source of life to the entire planet, how life itself touched him. And, uh, and transformed him. I mean, the, I, I think the story is absolutely beautiful. And that's one of those stories that from time to time um, it is interesting to recount and tell students as examples of how miraculous some of these healings can seem, of how these miracle healings can take place. Of course, it's all based on forgiveness. There's a few therapeutic details in between, but he accomplished his goal and felt like he was a happy man after that. And that's, that's beautiful. That's good.